Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our first virtual Towson University Black Comic Book Mini Fest. Um, my name is Dr. Don Wargs. I'm the director of African and African American Studies for uh, at Towson University. Uh, and uh, we are excited to have you all join us for this event. Um, we've been uh, planning it for a while. This is actually our fourth uh, Black Comic Book Festival, but the first time, of course, doing it remotely and virtually. Uh, but we think this will be fun. Um, without further ado, I, want, I wanted to just welcome you all. I'm going to turn it over to uh, the woman who's been organizing much of this on behalf of Towson University, uh, Kirsten Whiting, uh, and she will then turn it over to our first uh, session moderator, Kirsten. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming out today, um, for dedicating some of your time to learning more about comic books. We have a great lineup ahead of us. Uh, we will, there goes my video. Uh, we will have a few panels teaching you about the different um, workings of comic books, um, how to create costume characters, all of that. So I hope you all are ready and you are in store for a treat. Without further ado, I will hand it over to our first um, panelist, Ms. Christine. Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Okay, great. All right, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I'm your favorite neighborhood superhero, Chrissy X. And you caught me just as I was just about to go out and patrol the neighborhood to help keep it safe. Um, I think it's everyone's duty to help keep the neighborhood safe, but I like to use my special superpowers to do that. Um, as I was about to leave out, I think I realized I don't know where my mask is and I have to keep my identity a secret so that me and my family can be safe from any villains. So since superheroes are us happens to be closed on the weekends, I'm going to have to figure something out on my own. So I decided I'm going to make my own mask and hopefully you guys can join me in case you can activate your superhero powers and you need to go out and patrol the neighborhood too and keep your identity safe as well. So all you're going to need today just to have your own superhero mask is a piece of paper and a pencil so that we can create a mask template. And then whenever you have time, or if you can today, you can complete your mask and we can all go out and be superheroes together. So a plain sheet of paper like this is all you need to get started and a pencil. So to get started, all we have to do See what I'm doing. All you have to do is fold your paper in half. Like so. Just fold your paper in half. And this is going to be the midline of your mask. So that when you open it up, you'll have two symmetrical sides. Okay. Now it's really easy to create a mask and you can download a template from Google at any time, but you can also create your own just by figuring out what the dimensions are for your own face. If you have the time and the skill and the patience. So I have this handy dandy ruler right here, which I can use to measure from the middle of my nose to uh, the beginning of my eye in the corner here, all the way to the outer corner of my eye so that when I measure on the paper, I can make the proper markings so I can begin an outline for my mask. So hopefully you guys can do that along with me. Okay, so 
already have it marked off. So I'm going on my ruler. So I'm going to make some markings on my paper for where my eyes are. So I know what I'm kind of where I'm going with this. And you can really make any design that you want to, you know, considering all the different kinds of hero masks that there are. So I'm going to do just a simple design that I think will, you know, suit what I'm looking for. And the good thing about this is that even if you mess up, it's paper, so you can kind of, you know, erase, recut, reshape as you need to. I don't know if my pencil is showing up on here. Okay, but I'm just gonna do a simple, hopefully, I don't know if the lines are showing up, but once I cut it out, you'll be able to see. Now, when it comes to doing the eyes, when you mark off your dots for the shape of your eyes, all you wanna do is between the dots, create a egg shape, a oval shape kind of pattern that kind of looks like maybe a diamond rounded off. I really can't tell if you can. Let me do it with something darker, just to be sure. You can see where I'm at with this. You don't have to be a perfect artist. I am no perfect artist. I'm no Akinche A. Brown, but you know, I can, you know, just do Okay, here we go. Right. So, so far we have like the outline for the top of the mask and the eye shape. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the bottom. Remember, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can kind of adjust as you want to. But when we're done, we'll be go out, we'll be able to go out and fight crime together. Okay, let's see. All right, so I'm just darkening up my outline so I can make sure you can see what we're doing. And remember, like I said, you don't have to draw this freehand. You totally can just download and print a template. But it's fun to kind of create your own thing and make it your own. OK, so now we have half of the mask drawn out. And all we have to do is just cut. And hopefully it looks like what we want it to look like. Okay, so maybe I didn't mention we needed scissors when I said everything that you need. So of course you need scissors to cut out any template. Anything that you need to make a mask is typically household items that you can find or simply craft items that you can get from a craft store or like a store like Walmart, just for something simple. And the materials that you can use to make the mask are either duct tape, if you wanna keep it very simplistic, felt, um, felt sheets, which are easy to find, or craft foam sheets, which are also easy to find. Now, when it comes to, um, cutting out the eye pieces, you kind of want to put your scissors through the middle of the eye here and then be able to cut around. If you do have one of those exacto knives, I think you can use that. But I don't know if that's the best for paper. So I'm cutting around the outside, the outline rather of the eye. Hopefully it's big enough. 
We will see when I fit the template to my face. All right, let's see how I did. I think it looks pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I definitely like it a lot. So now that I have my mask uh, template done, all that I have to do now is cut out mask using this craft foam. Okay, so I just happen to have some craft foam laying around in my emergency situation where I lost my mask. I'm going to use this sheet to cut out this shape. A message has been received. So this is craft foam, like I said. I have black because it's a simple color and it's kind of usable in a universal way. But you can pretty much use, like I said, duct tape to create a mask if you need to on, you know, kind of like a immediate need basis or even felt. I like to use craft foam because of the way you can kind of mold it a bit, which we'll get to next. All right, so as you can see, I have the mask template on the craft phone. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and trace. I'm tracing this outline here and craft foam kind of has, um, it's kind of soft so it indents. So it's really easy to do the outlines and then to cut. Okay. So we've got one side carved out so far. Outline done so far, doing the inside of the eyes. Now this is the part that I do want to be as perfect as I can be on, since this is gonna ultimately be my mask. And I have to be careful. I can't let anyone recognize me. So yeah, we're almost done. Hopefully you can see what's going on. If not, I definitely am going to hold it up so you can kind of see the outline that I'm doing. It's actually a pretty cute mask. I think I might like it more than the one I had. Mm -mm. Okay, I don't know if you can see the outline here. I think you can. So the outline is drawn on the foam. Now it's already black, so I don't necessarily have to paint it. But if I had the time, I definitely would, um, if you have the time as well, I definitely would recommend painting your mask different colors. I happen to favor black. Black is in my costume anyway, but it could be any color you want it to be or multicolored. So we're just cutting out the foam, which is really good as a mask anyway, because it's really soft. So it feels kind of good on your face. Okay, we're almost done cutting. I'm 
I don't know if you can tell I'm right-handed, but I have to do this from the right side. All right, and we almost have it all the way cut out. I'm really excited about this. I can't wait to see how it turns out. Okay, so we have almost everything cut out. This is the entire outline of our mask. And now I just have to cut out the eye pieces. And remember I said it's good to kind of pierce the middle and then cut outward to have like a clean cut. Okay, I'm trying to be really careful on this part. You know, the eyes are what people focus on. All right, and we're almost done. Okay, looks like a good shape to me. Now for the next eye. Okay. And we are almost done. Yes, okay. I have two eye parts cut out. Let me just, just wanna clip this a little bit more. Just to be sure that it is perfect. It has to be perfect, right? Okay. So here is the completely cut out mask. I definitely do think it looks pretty good. And here we go. So this is the mask. Yeah, so this is the mask on me. So we're almost done. Now that I have it all cut out, I, I kind of just want to contour it a little bit to my face like a mask would be. And I have two things that I can use for that. A hair dryer, or you can definitely use the stove, or you can use, I think this is called a candle lighter. So all we need is just to heat it up because then it becomes uh, malleable, like more, formable, moldable, and I can kind of mold it to my face. Now, for our younger people who may be watching, definitely need adult supervision or help with this step. I would like to show you kind of how it works with the hair dryer first, so you can see kind of how effective it is if you're trying to sit home. It's gonna be a little bit loud, It only needs to heat up for like maybe a minute or two before you can uh, kind of mold it to your face. So let's see how it goes.
Christy, you're muted right now. Please unmute. Oh, thank you. Sorry about that. It does take a little bit longer to heat up the uh, craft foam with the hairdryer. So I tend to not really like to use that method. It is a lot faster to heat it up using the candle lighter. I don't feel quite confident about the mold that I have yet, but as you see, it does kind of, it does take the shape. So it is something you can use, you know, for safety sake, simplicity sake, it just does take a little bit longer, but you do, you do see that it does have a shape to it. So I do want to heat it up just a little bit. And I do have to be careful with the candle lighter. It just heats up the foam, like I said, just to make it a little bit more moldable. And then I just want to form it to my own face, my nose. So I feel like it, uh, it just fits me a little bit better. You do have to be careful doing this because if you heat it up and then you put it to your face too quickly, which I have done before, <laughs> you can kind of burn yourself a little bit. Nothing too major, but you do want to be careful. I'm trying not to burn myself here. I don't know if you can see. So I just have the flame a little close. And you can kind of tell when it's ready because it kind of starts bending. Okay. Okay. All right. I feel good about this. So I think I'm ready to put on a little bit of the finishing touches. If you do want to kind of smooth out the craft foam, I think you can kind of heat it up a bit to like smooth it, like the eye parts if you need to, or trim anything that you think is in the way. Now we did talk about decorating. If you're going to decorate, the first thing you would have to do is use a spray or a, a adhesive that you can brush on that can become a sealant. Then after that, Fabric paint would be the best paint to use because it's movable. And since uh, you know your craft foam can kind of move in bunch, it would be better to use a fabric paint versus acrylic paint because acrylic paint can kind of crack um, after you know long-term usage. So it would be best to use uh, this kind of fabric paint here. And this is like regular brush on fabric paint here. You can also use for decorative purposes the 3D paint. So if you want to add some dimension to your mask, um, this paint can uh, give you uh, what you call puffy, the puffy paint effect. So you can do, you know, lines or dots or anything like that, and it will be raised. So you know, raised from the mask. So it, it just gives it a more interesting dynamic if that's what you want to do. Now, if you don't have fabric paint, you can use spray paint. Um, you would definitely have to use the adhesive first. And then after you uh, spray your paint on, you would coat it again with your adhesive to seal it in if you don't have anything else on hand. Okay. So yes. So. I don't feel like I need particularly any decoration on my mask. And I don't think we have time for it to dry. Um, but I typically probably would just put a little shimmer on it and leave it at that. So now we're at the stage where we can uh, put the uh, holes on either side, on both sides of our mask so we can uh, string it with either string or elastic or any type of cord that you would like to use for your mask to stay on you. I don't have elastic today, so I'm actually going to be using uh, this cord here to uh, tie on my mask. 
but really anything that will keep it on is fine. So you do for this, want to fold your mask in half to put the holes in. You can just use your pencil point to get it started. And then uh, use the tip of your scissors. So I think I would like to put it here. All right, it appears pretty good. So I don't think I need my scissors for this. It has a clear hole in it. So for stringing the cord around, measure it with a ruler if you want to, but typically just measuring it around your own face would be the best thing to do. So I'm going to thread like, you know, I have it connected here, I have a lot of string. So you have to connect it to the mask and then kind of string it around, see how far it needs to go. And then once you cut it, then you can put it in the other side. You can do this method with elastic or any type of string that you're going to use. It's gonna be the same thing. See. All right, so I'm just tying it on here with a simple knot, nothing fancy, just a simple knot to keep it secure. Okay, oh, you can see that? Okay, just a simple knot to keep it secure. Tying it as tight as can be. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna snip off this little extra piece here because I don't want that in the way. You could do this two ways. You could, you know, just cut a piece off here so that you could just have two strings and then tie it in the back. I think I'm gonna go for the method where I can just kind of pull it around like this, because I have a lot of hair, and so it should be able to stay on like that. So I'm just measuring around to see where I have to cut it. All right, so it looks like I'm gonna cut it about here. So this is about how much string that I'm using. And I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna, to be sure, just cut a little bit more than what I thought, just to be on the safe side. You can always make it shorter. All right, so we're just threading it through on the other side. Okay, I didn't tie anything yet. I'm just gonna check it again, just to make sure I have enough space and that it will actually fit. Okay. Mm, I'm glad I checked because I don't think I do have enough space. All right, so. As with all superhero endeavors, when you come across a problem, you just solve it. So I'm gonna use the two strings and just tie it in the back because I think that'll be easier, easier for everyone. So I'm just kind of matching it with what I already have. It doesn't have to be exact because you're just tying it anyway. All right, so I'm threading it through the other side again. Attempt two. And I'm gonna tie it. All 
right and tying it as tight as I can. I feel pretty good about it. I feel it should work out. All right, I guess now we'll see if the proof is in the pudding as they say. Just tying it on now. Okay. I do feel like this is a suitable mask so that I can go out and do my superhero duties. Even when superheroes are us, me be closed. I can definitely just do it myself because I saved the day. Now I do feel like my mask might look a little plain. If you feel like it might look a little plain too, then I guess I could add a little decoration to it. Let's see, I do have this nice star. I feel like I could put this nice star here just for extra flair. And you can add whatever you would want to. You could add, um, you know, a shape that you cut out in the middle here. Um, for those who want to add a cultural element, you could put like an onk and just kind of glue it on here in the middle. But I think I'm just gonna add this star. It happens to have adhesive on it. So all I have to do is just uh, stick it on. And then I feel like it'll be all done and I'll be ready to save the day. Let's see. <laughs> so we have on our star. I'm going to retie it. And now, don my hood, and voila, I'm Chrissy X, ready to save the day. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this mask making tutorial for all superheroes out there. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thank you, Christy X. We appreciate the, the tutorial in, in, uh, in how to make a mask and, the, and to get prepared for uh, superhero activities. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna take, <laughs> uh, we appreciate it. We're gonna take about a, a, a three or the four minute break. And then we will uh, begin our next session, which will be a panel discussion on uh, African traditions and comics. That will go from about 1245 to 145 uh, then that will that will be followed uh, by a, another workshop on how to create your own comic, which will be from two o'clock to about two thirty, and then we will conclude with a panel discussion on the state of the black superhero. So uh, give us about three three to four minutes to get the next panel started. Um, and so yeah, thank you all for participating. Uh, and we'll be back shortly. Excuse me, Don. We do have one guest by the name of Maxwell that has his hand raised. Do you want me to have him ask his question? Sure, sure. Okay, Maxwell, if you unmute yourself, but feel free to ask your question of Christy X or Dr. Warks. And- Hi. Hello. Hello. Do you have a question, Maxwell? You uh, you have to unmute yourself, sweetheart. I know. Um, um, no, I don't have a question. I just wanted to say hi. Oh. Well, hello. Hi, Thank sweetie. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. 
Okay, so we're, we're going to take, as I said, about a two to three minute break and we'll get the next panel started. Uh, Kirsten, if you can put the slideshow on uh, while we wait and then we, we'll, we'll be back shortly. <laughs> 